Hello everyone, Lordmaster of Sotek here, and I'm finally here to finish this damn game. <laughs> it has been so long, and I've had people consistently asking me when I'm going to finish uh, Mark of Chaos, and I've decided that the time has come. I'm probably going to have to turn down the in-game audio just a smidge, but uh, yeah, we're, we're finally doing it. So without further ado, let's get this party started! I'll talk more when we're, you know, actually the in a map. The empire of man is in ruin. Chaos warbands roam the lands, killing and slaughtering. But a new danger threatens to engulf the empire. masses streaming over the mountains in an unstoppable tide. Dozens of green-skinned tribes have united beneath the crude banner of a powerful orc warboss, drawn together into a mighty war by the promise of bloodshed, warfare, and slaughter. The mountains shake with the thunderous din of war drums as his warriors surge toward the Empire in their thousands, descending on the beleaguered realm of man with but a sole purpose, to destroy everything in their path. the boys of the Broken Tooth tribes to us, Warbots. The war is ready to be launched against the stinking Umis. But first, we have to get through the lanes of the Stuntings. They guard all the ways through the mountains. What's the plan, boss? The plan? We kill them all! Death to the Stuntings! <laughs> Man, if there's one thing I genuinely miss about old strategy games, kind of like from the 2000s, it was the cinematics. You know, where you would play through a game and it would just have a ton of cinematics at practically the beginning and end of every single mission. Whether it was Warcraft 3 or even the earlier games or this game. Um, or like the Lord of the Rings Battle for Middle-Earth games. It feels like that was just something that was really special to those eras. I mean, here, we got another one. Jesus. What's this, boss? 
This sign tells us we're on the right track. It leads us to the big fight. It's like I genuinely really love the. Oh god, god, god controls. Oh god. Okay, <laughs> hold on a second. Uh, right. I can't control the controls at this part. I have to do it. Okay, whatever. I'll do it between missions. But um, if there's one thing I genuinely miss from this era, it's literally just you know kind of how story driven everything was. Because I I just really enjoy story driven games. All right, so let's do increases damage by one with lower chance to hit. So if we stack that up, we can get really, really high chance to hit Watch and get a damage play. bonus. Uh, for you, we definitely want to focus earthquakes. All right. What do you want? But uh, yeah, the time has come, as I've been saying, for me to finish this game. If that's what the gods it has want. been a very popular request to kind of come in and finish this game. Oh god, what is the button to... The studies! Let's uh... stop them! What's the plan? Oh, the green skins do... approach. Hurry it up! Let's see if we can catch them. I don't know if we're going to be able to catch them. Is it... Yeah, there we go. <laughs> it's all... It's all coming back to me. Bit by bit. Something cunning for me to do? He's attacking us! Dwarf hammers. One of the only things that I'm still butthurt about with this game. All right, let's go ahead and let's let, them, let them go. Let them go. Let's reorganize our battle line a bit here. One of the only things I um, didn't like about this game, deeply, genuinely, did not like about the game, um, was that the game just um, the the DLC choice was so bizarre to me. Where the first game, you know, you had High Elves, Empire, um, Chaos, and then Skaven. And then this game comes about and they're like, oh, let's do Greenskins and Dark Elves, which was just such a weird choice. Like, it almost feels more like they should have done, like, a half DLC. Um, like an update. Like... I mean, granted, back in these days, you know, you had to buy a disc for everything when a game updated. You couldn't really, couldn't really do it through the internet, per se. Um, and because of that, you know, it wasn't easy to do small updates. But the fact that the green skins and dark elves was so weird. Like, they made it work in the story, as you'll kind of see. But uh, I personally would have much preferred if they had done dwarfs and green skins as the major releases I am the best shaman ever. and then you know oh, gone from there ya? um the dark elves the dark elves were a weird addition in this game um By Grimna, we shall strike them down. yeah i don't think you're gonna do that we'll stick up good boss Let's see we'll have our archers take out their archers Is tell our lads boss? to run oh yeah we gotta save these other orcs let's go 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 Another try me. That's all what was made of, boys. Something up, boss. Defeat it. I am getting boss. Let's get among their warriors here. I almost wonder if I should have Gorbad outside of his unit because it, ma it makes him more likely to get like individual kills. And what you ultimately want to do, th this game kind of has a funny design where you really want to do everything in your power to um, kill as many, or to make your make your characters as big and bad as possible. Plus, we can get a nice roof charge here. This game does take me back though. When when this game originally came out, um, which man, it was like early in the 2000s. I'm not even trying to think. Um, all right, so we got a bunch of new guys. 
that just leads back the way we came. Uh, let's tell these guys to go ahead and advance. We're gonna go ahead and advance because we we can always come back for these guys. That's that's just free experience. Speak to me. Hustle. What is it, Runt? But um, when this game came out, um, I, I I think I've talked about this a little bit. Um, but if not, I guess you know now's better than never, or uh, than whatever. You know what I'm trying to say. Um, but, uh, when I was, when I was young, um, my family was very, uh, I, I, I don't, I, I would hesitate to say, like, we were, we were deeply poor, because, you know, we had a PC, but we had one, you know, it was, it was a family PC, um, and we weren't really able to do a lot with it. Like I remember getting Warcraft three and War Warcraft <laughs> Warcraft three like did not run well on my family PC. Like it 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 lagged so hard. And even when Warcraft three came out, I would not say that it was the most. Um, how do I say this? Uh, like consuming of games as far as like how hard it ran and uh, and you know when this game came out it was really difficult for my pc to handle it and i don't man i do not remember how i got off on this tangent but this was like one of the games that has really stuck well in my memory because it was a game I was actually able to play. I can't remember if like my family just got a small ah secret hidden gold. But um I can't remember if it's that my family got like a minor upgrade to our PC, like maybe we got a new one at some point. Um or if it was just that this game was not as, um, this game just ran better. Because uh, what I used to have to do when I was younger, what I used to have to do is that when I wanted to um, play a game, I used to have to go over to a friend's house um, and actually play the games at his place. Because um, his family was very affluent. Um, and I would just go over there and play video games because that was the only place where the video games would work. Um, I couldn't play them at home. Um, I remember even when we wanted to, like, play together on games, uh, we had to... There, were, there, was, there was a place called, like, Extreme Player Zone that we had to go to, and Extreme Player Zone had was basically um it was like a business in like a little strip center actually a big strip center um that the whole gimmick eh whatever I'm just gonna the unit, um, the, the whole gimmick was that oh you you come here and they just like had a ton of computers and they just maintained all those computers um and kept them updated with like graphics cards and all this stuff and they had all like the newest game consoles with a bunch of giant tvs and stuff and you would just pay money to basically hang out there um and be able to just you, you paid for time so like i think you paid by the hour um and so you would be allowed to just run around it was a super nice joint um like they had really high quality ac which is you know pretty important in texas especially if you're going to be someone that runs with um uh if you're going to be someone that runs like a lot of game console type stuff okay we're going to send our two character to units to take if out I those little range squads that way we can get some free experience but um like, we, you know, I'd have to go to the Extreme Player Zone and, like, pay for time uh, in order to be able to play games with my friends. But, you know, the the, the buddy I grew up with uh, at, on the kind of the brighter side of things, uh, we would generally take turns and stuff. We were surprisingly good about that. Um, I don't know, just like a random thing to think about. Playing, you know, playing old games brings up nostalgic kind of things. And for me, that's why I think this was my first 
uh, video game experience. You know, a lot of people, when it came to, like, video games involving um, Warhammer, a lot of people started with Shadow of the Horned Rat. Um, but I was never exposed to Shadow of the Horned Rat. I just... Uh, by the time I was getting into PC games, because I had a PC that could handle video games, um, and was able to afford games, um... I think Shadow of the Horned Rat was already fairly old by that point. But, um... Some fun, old lore master facts for you. But I used to play the, the absolute hell out of this game. Um, I mean, this game was probably one of my favorite games ever made. Just because, you know, I've always been a big Warhammer fan. Like, as long as I have... As long as I have been... Uh... It has been a very special universe to me. Which is why being able to kind of like do it. Uh, do it as a. Uh, essentially a career. Thanks to all of you guys is pretty, pretty, pretty special. Um, which is why I'm more than happy to play through this game again. Alright, we well, have to be careful in this next area coming up. Uh, this, this is one of the maps I actually remember really, really well. Because, uh, for those unaware, maybe new to the channel, um, I actually have played through this entire game before, um, with the Empire High Elf, which is, like, the good guys, and then the Chaos Skaven campaign, which are the baddies, um, but I, uh, I, uh, words, uh, was never able to finish the Greenskin Dark Elf campaign, because my computer... Um, updated to uh, a newer Windows. Um, I don't remember which Windows it was. I think it was going to like, I think it was going to Windows 10 or something like that. But when my PC got updated, it broke the game. Like the game just couldn't run anymore. Um, so I had to just give up on the campaign, which was super frustrating because we were actually very, very close to the end of the Greenskin campaign. I think out of, like, the three story chapters, we were at the end of chapter two, um, or something like that. So, um, that's kind of why we're having to go through it scratch here. Because essentially I would play the game and there was this one particular map that would just always crash. It was like a guaranteed crash. I'm going to sit here for a moment because this game, so, kind of to explain the mechanics of this game, because the game doesn't really explain them outside of a tutorial, uh, unless you do the tutorial. But, um, your units have a couple of stats you kind of have to pay attention to. So every unit has this banner, which the top bar, uh, is your hit points. And, uh, hit points are generally based, uh, it depends on, like, the kind of model. So, like, all orcs have two hit points, so they have to lose two health before a model dies. And then each unit has a certain amount of models. And the number of models you have and the amount of health you have determines your overall health bar on the top. Um, and, like, my pig boys have, like, three health. And then my characters, the uh, the shaman has 16. And Gorbash is supposed to have 21, but right now he's got 13. So I'm actually going to have him go ahead and drink a potion. But um, he's taking a couple smacks. Um, and we're actually going to uh, move him do? into a different unit. Because you'll notice... One of my units leveled up, uh, which is right here. So these units, if they get like a gold chevron, uh, that means the unit levels up. And when a unit levels up, uh, they get larger. Um, it doesn't actually increase their size in the mission. You have, you basically have to recruit new troops. But the pink bar you see below the health, the pink bar, that's a unit's morale, um, which morale uh, takes damage throughout uh, battles. So, like, if you're taking a lot of damage, or you're being shot at, or special abilities used by characters, or um, being attacked from, like, multiple angles, your morale gets too low, the units will break and run away. Uh, and then the white meter is your stamina. And stamina is used up, I believe, in close combat, but it's used up mostly by running. So you can walk, which keeps your stamina, stamina, there we go, from being used. Um, 
and drained, uh, which you do not want your stamina to get low. Because if your stamina gets too low, it starts affecting your morale and your combat stats and all this other garbage. Um, it also prevents you from running. So you want to try and keep it, you know, pretty full. So you really don't... This is not a game where you just run from place to place. All right, so... Uh, yeah, all right. Okay. We're going to have the boar boys run. Don't get too close. Because there's like catapults all over the damn place. Y'all go there. You go there. We're going to throw our javelins at the grudge thrower, which will hopefully pop it. Nope. Not even close. Uh, archers. Oh, actually, wait, no. War machines in this game are actually super painful. Let's go for an earthquake. We're gonna pop his roar so he attacks even faster. Four boys are getting that catapult down. Oops. Spread out, spread out. Ah! We'll stick up good. Uh we can actually do wide formations. Wow, that thing did a ton of damage. Let's get them on the rangers. What's over there? Whatever. I'm going. And we are playing on hard, I should note, so we are going to be taking probably substantially more damage than we normally would uh, from uh, forces that may not come off as super spooky normally. But this this game's kind of about, uh, the campaign at least, the campaign's all about mitigating losses. So your ultimate goal is to try and level up your troops as much as possible, and then to prevent them from dying as much as possible, which I've already done a terrible job of. Um, I'm going to blame that I have not played in a long time. <laughs> that is that is, that is is what I'm going to blame, uh, though it's not really much of an excuse, to be frank. All right, so next we're going to head down, um, uh, because like you can only heal your troops between in between maps or by using special items. So like this item will let me heal my guys a whole bunch, but I don't want to use it until I have, like, no other choice. Uh, well, not necessarily no other choice, but I want to use it as late as possible. Because the thing is, when you heal a model, or, like, like bring a guy back, it, it doesn't resurrect them at full health. It only resurrects them at, like, partial health. Um, so you have to be really careful... Um, that way looks good. at how you Just heal because if you heal a whole bunch of guys you're like oh well I used all 25 and I only got a few guys back but they're a full health which is not ideal or you're like oh man I used a whole bunch to get a whole bunch of guys back but they're only at one health which means that if something looks at them wrong they're gonna die okay go 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 Okay, we want to send the pigs in on the rangers. We want to have the... Uh, I want to have the archers focus their archers. And our guys mess up their guys. See if I can pull my pigs back. Uh, let's do an earthquake, which will do damage and morale damage. And then we're going to send in our pigs on the rangers. Ah, we lost a unit. That's okay, though. Just a... Just a... Unit of lads. Which were frankly expendable, anyway. Okay. All done there. That's actually probably for the best. Like, frankly, we didn't need that extra unit. Alright, so we found a whole bunch of dwarf tombs, and we're going to bust them all open now. Because they're going to have a whole bunch of nice little gear inside of them. So we got an item here. We're going to want to give that to Gorbash. Hopefully it's something good. Oh, nice! It's another effigy of Gork. Very nice. All right, then we can pick up some gold. So we're definitely going to need to use an effigy here. Um, okay, so we've opened all these. Let's have you guys walk back up to the top. Follow your nose! I love that the Orc Shaman is Toucan Sam from Fruit Loops. All right. And then this is another item. 
was kind of hoping we'd get some gold, but I guess we'll just take an item and be happy. You got something to say? Pathing is a little wonky uh, in this game, especially when you're like running around terrain. Um, it, it can be a little odd, <laughs> but you know, this game's from, uh, I don't even remember what year it came out, but it's, it's, it's an olden. Oh, we got the Thunder Choppa. Nice, nice, nice. Um, which, whenever you pick up gear, you actually have a character window. And they they ripped this game. Um, pro probably one of the strengths and yet at the same time weaknesses of this game is that it is a literal one-to-one um, -one ripoff of Tabletop at the time. So this was during 6th edition, I think. Um, so it was essentially... They, they did their absolute best to adapt it to be an exact copy of Warhammer Tabletop, which, uh, just while also being um, not uh, real time, uh, which not, not an easy thing to balance. Head. And frankly, I'll I, you know I'll be the first to say they did a fantastic Die. job of hitting that balance. Um, this game is probably not the most faithful me. adaption of Warhammer Tabletop that I know of, in you that like every inside. virtually every special rule and um, ability in the tabletop game you can kind of find in this game. Uh, there, there was some stuff they kind of were a little inventive on, like the way they did character trees was kind of clever um, because you have like various abilities, but like you could do character duels just like you could on tabletop or you can like issue a challenge. Um, okay, so we're gonna pop an effigy and I'm gonna move him over to here because we want him to get the hell out of the circle once he has max skies. Um, which is going to use up most of this, but we want him to get a really big fat unit of orcs. And since they've leveled up, their max unit size is 24. So we're going to get them as big and fat as we can. Um, but we're not going to do any healing besides models. Because between maps, so like between missions, um, you actually heal up, but you don't resurrect dead models. You have to pay gold to bring back dead guys, because you're essentially, like, recruiting new troops, right? Okay, so we're gonna tell them to get the hell out of there. Alright, uh, we're gonna do the board boys next, because they are, they're just really strong. Um, and, because they have this ability, so they have spear chuckas, which allows them to throw their, uh, spears at people, and it just does an obscene amount of damage if you have enough guys. So we want them to be as close as we want them to be at max unit size where possible uh, Because if they're at max unit size, they're going to hit for just a hilarious amount of damage All right, good job, and then let's do I kind of want to do archers next um, Let's bring in the weaker universe. Yeah, we took the thing you know what ultimately got us and did too much damage to us was stupid to bolt burn. All right, real quick, I'm gonna go ahead and advance my shaman this way, I am the best shaman ever. which is going to trigger an event. Because, yeah. You got you won't escape me, chopper, for long standing. Looks like we're gonna have to find another way around, boss. Because all the dwarves are hiding back there, but they blow up that giant ridge to prevent us from getting through. So we're going to go this way. But uh, so far, so good. Uh, the the way we're essentially... I think I'm essentially going to do this series is I'm basically just going to do uh, roughly one mission per episode. Um, unless a mission ends up just being like hilariously short. But most missions tend to be... Gonna be fairly lengthy. Okay, do they have any range troops? That's the thing we need to know. Um, let's actually hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Let's kind of reform the ranks here a little bit. So I think what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna have the pigs engage the dwarfs by throwing spears at them. Spear Chucka! Because we want to try and get these guys to max level. Whoop! And... Okay, and then we're going to just fall back. And we're going to let our archers get just... Go for the soft bitch! What do you want? Go for the soft bitch! These ones are mine! Alright, send them out. We can take 
And boom. Get a nice big earthquake, making dwarfs do triple backflips. Have Thorbad increase his attack speed, which will level him up. And we want to make him really good at challenges. I mean, one, one thing the game does not really explain well, um, and can really catch you off guard if you've never played it before, is that uh, you actually have missions where you have to do duels. So, like, you have to fight, you have to fight enemy characters one-on-one. -on -one. And when you have to fight enemy characters one-on-one, -on -one, um, you need to make sure your character is, like, healthy. <laughs> and, like, really good at dueling. Otherwise, you can have a really bad time. Um, and lose that mission, which will lose you the campaign, and you'll either, you'll have to, like, just basically not be able to complete that mission. Alright, real quick, uh, I'm gonna send, I go where I want to. I'm gonna send him around, because this is definitely a secret item, um, or gold. If it's gold, I would just send the boar boys, because they're really fast, but there's a good chance it's an item, so we're actually gonna have him hustle. Uh, around the side because if it's an item items can only be picked up by characters so you have to um, You have to get some item or uh, you have to send a character But uh, if it's gold yeah, any won't. unit can pick it up, which is really oh, nice Because speed is an important factor in this game Yeah, there, there yeah there's a dwarf some dwarf Watch units on patrol. Play. I would rather not fight them because I don't want Gorbash to miss out on experience. Uh, only cause I want to. So we're just gonna stay a little further back and hope that these uh, hammers don't attack us. If they do, it's not the end of the world, but you know. Uh -huh. yeah, he's got he's down five. Hopefully this is a healing potion. Yeah, nice. It's five, we're gonna go ahead and drink it. Get out of me, uh because there is a dwarf lord at the end of this map that we're gonna have to fight. And we definitely want um, Gorbash to defeat him in a duel, because that'll give us a ton of experience. But the dwarf character is, like, obscenely strong. I think he's, like, level 10 or something. Um, and he's really, really nasty. So we really don't want to fight him in a fair fight. Too many voices um, in the because on this difficulty, we cannot beat him in a fair fight. <laughs> Not unless we were just running, like, a ton of potions... Um, because he's just, he's just too high of a level. Um, so, uh, we need to do our best to get, keep Gorbash healthy and make it where if he fights the Dwarf Lord, the Dwarf Lord has already taken a significant amount of damage. Alright, so we've got everybody ready to go. If that's what the gods want. Let's continue our advance. Oh, and we lost ready, three boss. pigs in that last fight. That is absolutely brutal amounts of money. Uh, we do have another Effigy of Gork, which we will use before we fight the uh, Dwarf Lord, uh, which he's in a he's in this plaza right here. So we will definitely use that item before we uh, engage him, just to give us our best chance at spending the least amount of money possible. Because there's a ton of stuff you can do with money in this game. Uh, between maps, you can upgrade your troops' armor... You can upgrade their weapons, and you can also buy them uh, unit commands. Speak to me. So you could you could be like, okay, I'm gonna buy this unit, yes, um, like a standard bearer, a unit champion, and a musician, which all have different effects. Uh, you can also buy magic items, so you can like equip your characters with new magic items and potions, or give your units magical banners. You can buy mounts for certain characters. There are too many voices in the head. Oh, yeah, let's, 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 let's advance up to here. Gorbash's unit is doing really well. Um, Get on with it. Oh boy. Dogs with us. So we're gonna throw javelins at these warriors. And just uh, we're gonna bring Gorbash all the way around. We're gonna do an earthquake in front. Pull our boar boys back a bit. And then we'll charge back in. To just kind of minimize losses, hopefully. Ideally. <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> we're, we're, we're wishing, frankly. 
All right, so we broke one unit. That's good. Uh, we're not going to worry about them just yet. Okay, bro both units are broken. Now, when units are broken, it is, like, super easy. Laughably easy to run them down. All right, so the pigs are at max level. So I don't really want to bother with them in fights anymore. Uh, we're going to go ahead and send in our error boys against these hammers. All right, let's get a counter charge with Gorbash. I feel like I'm maybe getting friendly fire with my orcs, but I'm honestly not sure. All right, let's get in our rear charge. And we'll do an earthquake. It just nukes their morale. If we break them... Ah, okay, no, we we killed them, not break. Okay, so next thing is the boss fight. So we're going to go ahead and um, have Gorbash kind of get us as close as we can to full health. Let's go ahead and pop our effigy. We're going to... The nice thing about the effigies is they thankfully designed them where they do not heal you unless you're like essentially holding still. If you if you run, um, they will stop healing whatever is like in them, because I guess the designers figured out that if you're like <laughs> that, people like me would be doing this, where it's like I'd rather be healing optimally. We're gonna get our pigs back up to full, so that we can get a really really big fat juicy javelin throw on them uh, into the dwarf lord, because they're gonna be our best chance to do lots of damage to him. Uh, because he is very, very tanky, and he has a lot of health, and he's really, really good at fighting. <laughs> um, do I want to do the boys next, or do I want to do the archers next? Um, hmm. How are you guys on experience? Not great, to be frank. Um... And there's like just enough to top off this unit of orc boys. Yeah. Yeah, let's let's I like the the orc error boys just aren't that great. Um I'm probably going to like I'll probably keep one of them on board, but I'm going to probably replace the other one with um goblins when I get the chance. Whereas like Actually, you know what? No, no, no. no. Let's okay, yeah. Let's just get them to a respectful 12. Uh and then let's take how much is left? 12? We Let's get this unit to full. This, this unit's the cl on, closest to leveling up. And I, I am going to want a unit of Orc Error Boys. Because they are good. Um, like, they, they hit surprise. They hit fairly hard. And they're very tanky for archers. So we'll get we'll get one unit to full. And then we can get the other unit up to just... Uh, maybe we can get this... And then we can get, like, the Shaman's unit up to 14. So this goes up to 18. Because this will actually give them like a decent number of shots. I was stupid with those catapults earlier. I should have I should have been more careful with how I get engaged them. Right. And then we're gonna send him back in to top off. You want me to do something? Alright, the effigy's all used up, so we're going to get into formation, and then we're going to go kill this lord. We got a really, really hefty army, which is nice, because we're going to need it. Um, I don't think the dwarves have a war machine. Hopefully they don't. I think it's just like a bunch of units. But what we're going to try and do is we're going to try and use the boar boys as the least amount possible. Like, just use them to damage the lord. Um, with Javelin Throws, because they're at max level. So they actually cannot get any more experience for the rest of the campaign. Um, they're still a really, really useful unit, and you definitely want to have them, because if you're fighting a situation where you're like, oh crap, like I'm going to take a lot of damage, um, then you want them pulling a lot of the weight. What you want us to do? Uh, let's actually have Whatever you stop. You I, don't, I don't want them in front while walking. Like, if I need them to run up into the front, that's one thing, but I don't want them leading us in. Get 
I don't remember what the squad up here well. is. Alright, where are they? they are. Upon the blood of my ancestors, I swear that these greenskins shall not live to see the setting sun. Go for the shot, wits! Shoot them again. Okay, so we're going to do our best here to just kind of mow people down. We are going to use the boars to help here. Get on with it. Don't get too close. I saw some people level up, but maybe I'm crazy. Alright, like I said, we're, we're not going to engage him normally. Is he, is he by himself? Nope, he's still in a hammer's Get unit. So we're gonna attack the unit. You'll see, you'll see the health bar suddenly get really big. Wait for it. Wait for it. I do. Chop him up. Chop him up. All right, we got him to really, really low health, and now we're just trying to finish him off. Uh, which dueling is spooky because there's all sorts of special abilities flying around. There are different stances you can take. Ah, we got him! Nice, 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 nice. Well done. Well done. All right. What do you want? I am the best. So we got a bunch of gold, uh, we lost 65 guys, oof. Um, no, he killed 71, oh, that's because he killed some, like, neutral stuff. Um, so, yeah. First mission down. I'm trying to remember where the story elements are here. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll take care of some, like, managerial stuff. Um, this first episode's gonna be a little longer than I think the remaining ones are, because a lot of the missions are not as long as the first one. Um, but some are actually even longer. Uh, it just depends on the quest in question. So, I think it's gonna tell us a little bit of a story thing here, so we will run over here to the Red Eye Staging Camp and go from there. Oh no, it just drops us here, okay. So, located within a cave overlooking the lands of the Empire, this encampment is often used as a staging post for greenskins descending to attack the lands of the Empire. The camp is a crude affair of rough huts built from wood scraps, rocks, and fur stuck together with dung. In the strong mountain winds, it can be smelt for miles around. Alright, so like I said earlier, um, we have a lot of wounded units. Um, and we can also buy new units. So the first thing I want to do with my gold, uh, because I do have a bunch of starting gold, uh, plus the like 650 we earn. We want to pick up new units that are like new types because I like having like multiple types of units. Uh, then the temple is where we can heal units. Uh, we want to put and we can also switch things around. So like I want to put I want to switch around some items. Gorbaz leveled up again so we want to make him better at fighting. Um, okay so we want our pigs to be full health. Uh, we want orc boys to be full health. We want air boys to be full health and i don't think we're gonna worry about the others for right now um there are also other things we could buy so we could like spend some money to make a unit's morale higher for a single mission which is stupid uh or um five percent chance uh to hit uh which is actually not that bad armory this is where we can buy a lot of fun stuff but the biggest thing we're gonna buy is a mount so we're gonna buy a pig for Gorbaz, which is going to uh, allow him to join the Boar Boys unit, which is awesome. Um, it makes it so that I don't have to take two units of orcs in order for things to be good there. Uh, Barracks is where you buy and sell units, and then the Alchemist actually allows you to buy, like, items. Um, so I actually want to buy a Shield of Crushing for Gorbaz, which is going to make him, like, super duper tanky, uh, and also a little meaner on the charge. And then I'd also like to buy the Staff of Sorcery for uh, Wazog, which is going to allow him to um, have more damage on his spells. So you'll notice our money is kind of low, but that's okay. We've done everything we needed to do. So pretty much what I'm going to do with what's left with my money is I'm going to upgrade my Boar Boys. 
um, to be as good as possible. Because they're going to be my bodyguard unit for Gorbash. So, let's pick them up. Uh, <laughs> let's get them a unit champion. Uh, and then let's... We want them to be as survivable as possible. Uh, I think what we are going to do is let's go ahead and sell this unit of um, Error Boys. And then let's... I actually... That was stupid. I probably should have sold the Orc Boys now that I think about it. That's okay. Uh, I want to get them armor. So we want to get the... Uh, eight gold short. That's painful. Okay, so we'll just take first level armor. Uh, because the thing about armor is the more armor you have, the less... Often your guys die, therefore the less money you have to spend resurrecting people. Um, uh, and let's go ahead and get second level armor on our orc, orc boys. So this is going to make everyone quite a bit more survivable, um, which is great. And uh, we can go ahead and actually call it for there. So thank you all so much for watching. I hope you're enjoying watching through this series. I will tell you now at the time of watching that I am not going to put out any of these episodes until I'm done with the entire campaign uh, just for my sanity to make sure that like nothing breaks like it did last time so by the time you're watching this I will have already recorded the entire series and you can look forward to an episode coming out every day until it's finished so I hope you're all looking forward to that and I'll see you next time thanks so much for watching bye